Oh, here we are. It is Monday and not Friday, as I normally do. It's August 28th, and I first want to say I apologize for not getting the video done on Friday, but uh, Friday morning I woke up at about 2 o'clock, and I hadn't had a flu in 20 years. Well, I had the flu, and uh, I thought I was going to die. It was really something, and I literally was in bed until uh, this morning. I stayed in bed for three days. Uh, I hadn't felt that way in several decades. It was just awful. And uh, I felt badly about not being able to do the vis video, but I physically couldn't do it. Uh, it was just like that. I, I didn't get the uh, global member pages updated on Saturday. I couldn't do that. And uh, they're updated now. The global pages are all updated. The sales that have finished have gone. I know a number of you noticed. They're saying, why, why haven't been updated? He always updates them on Saturdays. Well, I normally do. But my, my throat is still off um, a little bit and uh, uh, still still uh, not quite back to normal. But I wanted to get this done uh, because I felt like I was very far behind. <laughs> uh, we do a lot. And uh, so here we are. All right. And there's a few things uh, I want to talk about right off the bat. And some of you have used them. I, I noticed there's been some traffic over there. But uh, the September sales coming up uh, in New York, a uh, number of the catalogs are up already. Uh, the there's a really good the LZ, LJZ collection of uh, Chinese jades. Uh, it was was posted. These are at Christie's. Uh, exceptional looking um, uh, auction. Some great examples. And we're going to be doing videos on all of these. And then the uh, Minyao Hara collection. Uh, some really great Sung pieces. All kinds of fabulous objects uh, coming up in that. And uh, let's see what else is there. And then there's the Marchant sale. Now we're going to be doing a video on this. Um, I actually called and spoke to um, uh, Samuel Marchant about this because I, I looked through the catalog and the stuff was just amazing. And these are not regular, um, these are Wan Lee Imperial wares from sort of in the, in the early part of the Wan Lee period. And there are some true rarities in here. So things, a number of the pieces they've owned for many, many, many years. And uh, there's one piece in particular that I'm going to talk about that was bought by Richard Marchant in 1967. <laughs> And that shows you how long these guys can hold on to things. And uh, it's an incredibly rare um, uh, 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 piece. He bought it at an auction with a very, it's got a very interesting history. And we're going to go through that in the video. And uh, we're going to get that out. We've already started the layout for that. I started the layout for that on Thursday. I had wanted to get it done on Friday after speaking to Samuel. And um, um, I just, I physically couldn't do it. So so I'm going to get it out this week, maybe maybe later today or, or tomorrow. Tomorrow. And then there's the uh, Sotheby's sales, important Chinese works of art. There's some great things in there, as always, and so forth. And there's some other sales coming up. There's a Japanese and Korean sale that's coming up at Christie's. There's several more uh, coming up at Sotheby's. And uh, Sotheby's, uh, this time around, posted the catalog, a PDF catalog of it anyway, and we were able to turn it into a flip book here, um, as did uh, uh, Christie's for a number of sales. So um, as they become available, we'll post them. All right. Um, but there's some really nice things. And what's interesting is that the um, other online auctions um, that closed out, as you know, a lot of them closed out last week. We're going into Labor Day here in the, in the States. And uh, I checked this morning when I was doing the update, and there wasn't a lot of stuff on there. Uh, there are a couple of good sales popped up in Europe that we're going to talk about here real briefly. But before we do, I want to talk about one sale that's coming up in 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 um, uh, Florida in Panama City and and this is one of the shadiest auctions I've ever seen um, it is a disgrace and this company uh, is is uh, my antique collections and they claim to be selling um, uh, the, the personal collection of Sackville George Pelham um, who was a, a very famous collector uh, and they they've got the they've got his biography correct in here but all of these pieces are brand new they are just ridiculous and uh, they're all fakes, and it's one of the grandest cases of misrepresentation I've seen in a long time. And uh, they, they've gone about to uh, uh, just load it up with, uh, um, um, you know, Bluett labels and pictures of people. And here's a photograph of Bluett and Sons, and they, they make it look like this is an archival collection of some kind. It's not. This jar is clearly brand new with a young Gen mark on it. It's a ridiculous piece of porcelain. Um, it's just it's just an absolute utter and total fake. They didn't make these in the young Gen period in this style. Just ridiculous. Um, and then they have this the, the Yuan jar with, with with figures on it. And many of you have seen these around before, but those of you that haven't, th this is a this is an absolute modern fake. 
and um, uh, they've been turning up in huge numbers everywhere. Um, this would be, of course, a, 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 a you know a two, three, four, five million dollar jar were it authentic. All right, and uh, and it certainly wouldn't be turning up at, at this auction house. I can guarantee it. I went and looked up the address of the auction house. This is it. This is their. Uh, this is what they list as their address. Um, uh, it's a postmark in Panama City. It's 79040 Front Road, Front Beach Road, uh, number 2058, Panama, Florida. And this is their headquarters, apparently. Um, they have no other address listed. Um, I looked up their website, and peculiarly, um, their website phone number is linked to a restaurant company in um, Tempe, Arizona, of all places. And I don't know if that's a mistake or what it is that the, the restaurant group that it's linked to looks like a legitimate thing. Um, and may, maybe they have some involvement or put up the money or registered the domain or something. I don't know what the deal is there. But the whole thing just is ridiculously uh, 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 stupid. And we've seen these operations before out of post post offices uh, or, or, you know, private post offices. And it's in this strip mall with a, with a dollar store and all kinds of things. And uh, the, the very notion that they'd be handling a major Asian art collection is just, you know, r ridiculous and ludicrous. Um, and I, I did check um, their past auctions. And they also have, of course, the usual slew of, of, of alleged paintings by famous people, um, Zhu Bei Hong, um, uh, Zhang Da Quan, um, you name it. They've got them all, as, you know, all the usual suspects. None of them are authentic. Um, I went through the sale. I looked at everything. I was trying to find something of, of, of possible merit, and I couldn't find one single thing in here that was antique and authentic. Not one, th well, not one thing. So if you if you're contemplating bidding on this and you think it's a sleeper auction or any other silliness, it's not. This is a fraud scheme, period. Um, uh, you have uh, you have these uh, 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 Huzong paintings by the Sung, but supposedly by a Sung painter, and just as another one of these um, uh, splash paintings by Zhang Duquan. Uh, over here, you know, estimated at five to seven thousand. Of course, if it was by him, it would be estimated at five to seven hundred thousand or a million. Um, so, any rate, uh, the the whole the whole thing is an absolute scam. Um, so, you know, do not spend a dime at this auction. That's all I can tell you. Um, I know many of you are, are already smart to all this, but some of the pieces they've they've sh shown like this like the Yohan style jar and this, um, a, a, you know, chin lung marked uh, jade cup. Of course, it, none of it, none of it is stylistically consistent with anything done during the, during the chin lung period. Um, it's just, a, it's just a total knockoff. And, uh, and then you have this, uh, a, a, a Celadon again, same thing. Um, they very carefully don't date any of the pieces. This is the thing that's really interesting is that they, they, they show all these, uh, you know, things that would be, you know, great rarities in some cases, some of them are just ridiculously bad, you know, modern pieces. But in, in this case, I've noticed that on, on none of the, none of the, none of the ceramics that supposedly belong to, uh, um, uh, this collector, uh, the Sackville uh, uh, Pelham collection, um, uh, are authentic. The, the, some of you may remember this. If you've been collecting for any length of time, you may remember a few years ago, there was a jade buffalo that turned up in a bank vault that had belonged to this family. And it was sold in London. I forget who sold it, but it brought around three and a half million dollars. Um, he, he collected the best of the best of the best. Um, everything was beautifully provenanced. Everything was bought from Blewitz. Everything had documentation and on and on and on. And, uh, we've seen these, uh, fake tags before, of course. Uh, they, they stain them and dye them. Um, uh, no, notice the, the very similar color of both. Um, which would which would be uh, pretty remarkable if they were both aging at exactly the same color, uh, but at any rate, uh, that's the deal here. It's all it's all a big scam, so don't get involved with it. All right. The other thing that I did add though is that Willing Wies Jaeger over in the Netherlands uh, has a sale coming up on the on the on the sixth and the seventh. Comes up next week. Uh, they seem to have posted this kind of late. I don't know. I don't think it's been up for that long, 
But um, there's some pretty good things in there. They've got some copies. They've got some fakes. Uh, Vlinguis is not great at, at providing a lot of accurate information. That's my, my only gripe with them is that they, uh, they, they, they tend not to date things. They tend to leave things very, uh, very uh, uh, sort of out there. They say, you know, blue and white dish, you know, blue and white jar with no information. Um, and, and there's a lot of fake transitional pieces in the cell. I found one piece that looked legitimate, but I also saw five or six others that were total copies. They're just they're just absolute knockoffs. And I spent a lot of time going through this this morning, actually, to make sure we didn't put anything on the global pages that that uh, uh, were suspect, because there's a lot of suspect stuff in here. Um, and uh, the, the, they provide, um, they're very, uh, Villingui sells good things. This is what I don't understand. They know their stuff, but they provide very little useful information about the objects. Um, uh, if you uh, open this up, um, it just says uh, 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 blue and white Amari decor, 18th century large pot. That's that's it. Um, um, and, and, and this, the one on the right is Kangxi period. They should put that in there. And uh, this one is probably uh, 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 probably not Kangxi, but probably uh, certainly Chen Lung. Um, and they could put that in there. And they lotted them together. I don't know. Maybe maybe one of the pieces is heavily restored or something. But be very careful um, when you go through their listings and get confirmations of age from them in condition reports for everything. But it's a it's a good look. At, there's some good things in there, and I don't mean to be too rough on them, but uh, um, they they are I think intentionally vague in their descriptions. It seems um, to try to slip in some uh, copies. All right. And uh, then over to uh, what happened on eBay last week. Well, it wasn't a bad week. There isn't a lot on there this week. I, I went through the uh, list of what we're going to put on there. We're going to update it. Uh, by the time you see this, the, the global uh, the, the newsletter page will be updated. Uh, but the, the, I didn't, there was pretty thin pickings, and I'm not sure why. I, 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 I noticed there was a big drop in listings from both um, the, the EU and UK as well as the United States. Um, uh, on, on, on decent things. And I don't know why that is. Um, it may, maybe there's some sh shifting in prices. Um, a, a, a couple of weeks ago or two weeks ago, we talked about, um, uh, the, the financial things that are going on in China. And since then, I've learned a bit more about it and they are increasing restrictions on money going out of the country, apparently, or there are plans to. And I think that with their economy is in a rough spot right now, I think what you're probably going to see is that the, um, the uh, more moderately priced things are going to be soft for a while. All right. The high end stuff, the best of the best of the best, I think is still going to be able to find buyers because uh, the, the people that have the, have the money to spend in the, in, in the heavy, heavy stuff um, will still have the money. But I think that you're going to see some softening on on the sort of mid and lower range things, things that are under under twenty thousand dollars. I think you're going to see some a bit of softening there and some price results, <clears throat> unless unless it's miscatalogued and it's much better than the listing it. But but it's going to be interesting to watch uh, because uh, uh, China, as you know, is 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 going through some financial stuff uh, because of uh, uh, export problems and. Um, world turmoil and all kinds of other nonsensical things that are happening. So I don't know. I don't know where it's going to land, but it'll be uh, interesting to watch. So um, be a little cautious in bidding right now on um, typical stuff, and because I think we're seeing a softening in certain prices, which is good for the collector. Uh, if you're not buy, if you're not buying uh, Chinese antiques as a collector. Um, uh, you, you, and you're buying only as a dealer. Um, you want to watch your margins very closely nowadays, because I think there's a lot of, there's a good opportunity to get stuck with something that has very little extra value to be gotten out of it. All right. Now, uh, this, the Japanese photograph. I love this photograph. It's from the Yokohama studio and it's got this fantastic piece of cloisonne with this man posed next to it to give it a sense of size. Uh, probably done in the 1870s. Um, he says early, early, early 20th century for the photograph, but I think the, the cloisonne is, is probably from the 1870s or the 80s. It's a really, really nice piece. And, uh, the photograph was a nice picture. I like old photographs and it went for $61. Not bad. Nice piece of art, It'd be beautiful, photo uh, framed, hung it on a wall somewhere. 
And then over here to this, Joni's had a bunch of things up. They had they had a number of lots we're going to talk about. Um, one of them was this. This um, uh, uh, they called it a Junyao hairs for flambe glaze. Um, it's it's Shuan wear with with a flambe glaze, but it's a nice old one. Uh, looked pretty good. And as we've seen in the last few weeks, certain pieces of Shuan wear seem to be getting a lot of interest. And uh, there was that 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 interesting sort of Ming style vase that uh, brought a couple of thousand dollars. And this one did well too. It brought seventeen hundred and seventy five dollars. So there you are. And then this, the little teapot that I liked, it was, it was, it was up for it, this, the seller had posted this, it had been listed for several weeks. And uh, I thought it was a nifty little, little Japanese molded and relief worked uh, teapot. Um, it even got some, you know, some aspects to it, not too, too far, too dissimilar from some Korean works. Um, nice bridge handle on it with the dots and all that. And it sold, it went for $391. That was a nice thing. I thought that was a genuinely good object. And then this, the Cloisonne vase, probably a uh, uh, late Qing to Republic period, made between 1900 and 1925 or so. But a very nice piece of work. Here's a good picture of the bottom. It's, it looks like it's done on bronze. I don't think that's a copper body. Um, beautifully made. Um, nice, heavy construction. Good size. There it is. Looks like it's about nine inches tall. How tall is this? I think it's about nine inches or so. Um, oh, it's bigger. It's uh, 33 centimeters, so it's about uh, 13 inches tall. Nice piece of cloisonne. And I uh, went for, I think, very re This, to me, seemed like a real good buy. Um, uh, it, it had a bump in it, I think, maybe um, here and there. But it went for $283, which isn't bad. It was just bad at all for that. That's a, that's a nice piece of cloisonne. And, uh, and then over here to this. The uh, Kung Shi vases. Now, this is a curious situation. Uh, Joni's had three of these. Um, they were all about the same size. Um, they were all um, five and three quarters to six inches in height. Um, um, this one had its lid and all that. And it sold for $1,775. Which to me seemed like a, know, that's that's not an unreasonable price. This is a desirable form. They did produce these. They're not imperial or anything, but they're very nice quality. They're interesting and they have good colors. And then they had another one, again, um, with its lid, and um, sold for it's virtually identical in so many ways. Uh, sold for twelve hundred dollars. And uh, then there was this one that had a lid. And it was about five and three quarter inches tall, and it sold for five hundred and sixty-five dollars. And I, if if somebody can explain to me, and I, I checked them, the condition reports were all the same. They all had minor wear, that sort of thing. Nothing serious, no repairs mentioned. Um, but why this one was worth seventeen seventy-five, and this one was worth five sixty-five? Um, that's a twelve hundred dollar difference. And uh, that's why sometimes it, pay, it really pays to sort of follow things because if you know the heavy money went after the first one and then the second one and then the third one. I don't know what the order was that they sold, but it's, it seems to me this that's sort of a, a really strange spread because they the, the, this is not a, a newer one and the other ones are older. They're all the same age. And uh, you have a $1,200 spread over to over 100% difference in price. Um, which is which is something I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen that in a long time, and I can't understand why. Um, so if anybody out there knows, leave a comment. Tell me what. Tell me why that was. I think it's rather odd. Uh, and then over here to this, they had that Republic uh, uh, porcelain fan, uh, nicely decorated. I thought this was a nice thing. I, I really did. I um, um, very uh, beautifully decorated, nice Famille rose enamels. Um, Here's a picture of the back of it. Uh, certainly looks to be a republic to me. And uh, the, the way the birds are done and the outlining and so forth. And it looks like it was in very nice condition. Had had inscription on it. Um, and it sold for $1,285, um, which I think is fine. Uh, that was a, a rather unusual piece. Um, unusual republic pieces always do well. And I think this one might have been maybe a bit under the money. Um, because uh, I, 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 we've all seen these republic inscribed pieces before in just, you know, regular vases and, 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 and you know, can canisters and so forth, brush pots, and they, you know, with inscriptions, they, they can, they can bring, you know, two or three times this amount easily. And if it's by a famous artist, they can bring, you know, 50 times that. But um, I thought this was a nice thing. And I think somebody got a good buy. Uh, and then over to this, this was one of the little bargains of the week. I don't know if it was restored or what happened, but this was a, a nice uh, 18th century blue and white uh, plate. 
um, went for fifty or uh, sixty six dollars. It seems to me there was another one that sort of did the same thing um, uh, um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it has a faint hairline in the center, and that's it. And um, it is uh, how big was this? Twenty three centimeters. So it's about nine inches in diameter, uh, a little over nine inches, and uh, went for just sixty six dollars and fifty one cents, which is perfectly fine. And uh, then over to this, the Femi Noir um, uh, Kangxi style uh, uh, Mei Ping vase that was uh, 31 centimeters tall or about, about 12 and a half inches. Um, now, these, these turn up from time to time. Here's a, here's a picture of the bottom of it. Um, and uh, they're often ascribed, and people will argue that these are Kangxi period because of the iridescence and the glaze and all that. And that's, that's sort of a wives' tale because they, they, they know that the, they, they were able to create that iridescent surface um, on these blackwares um, uh, in, the, in the late Qing and Republic period. Uh, and uh, I've seen these before. And the first time I saw one of these, many, many years, about 30, 30 back in the, well, it was back in the 80s, I guess, a while ago. Uh, very similar. And I thought it was Kung Shi um, at the time because I, I didn't I didn't realize what were some of the things that you needed to know then. And I was still learning it a bit. And uh, and then when I when I spoke to somebody that knew a great deal, um, they explained why. But they said they these were for decades sold as Kung Shi. Um, er erroneously, and the, this is a, a late, uh, later Qing example, um, and it did very well. Or it brought twenty one hundred and thirty three dollars, and uh, they didn't, um, they didn't uh, represent it as being anything. They didn't even give it a date, uh, but it, uh, to me, it looked pretty clearly that it was a late Qing example. Um, in twenty one thirty three, if this was a Kangxi piece in this style, it would have brought a lot more than that. Um, so there you are. All right, and then over to this, this uh, uh, they called it late Ming to early Qing. I think it was probably early Qing, this wood carving. Um, I liked it because it was very rustic. Um, this had a great look to it. It had a good-looking surface. Um, it looked like it had been lacquered, uh, carved it, carved wood, and then lacquered at one point, and, and so a lot of it rotted off, and it left behind this terrific surface. And it's the kind of surface you see on really old wooden wooden um, bodhisattvas, um, uh, ones that are much much older, much you know, Yuan and Sung and so forth. Uh, you see these this kinds of surface. I don't think it's that old. I think it just was exposed to the elements and maybe not preserved quite the way it should have been. But it didn't go too far, and I think it's got a great look. Um, and it was pretty good size. It was, uh, what was it? It was uh, 41 centimeters tall. So it was about, oh, it was you know, it was about 15 or 16 inches in size. Nice looking thing. Sold for $861. But if you like wood sculptures, and, uh, you know, everybody knows I do. I, I, I buy them all whenever I can find them that are good. Um, uh, this was a, a nice thing. This was a good thing. It's missing the stone out of the head, which it had at some point, probably a little piece of turquoise or something, uh, or a piece of agate possibly. Uh, but still nice looking statue and it went for, uh, $861. And then over to this, this was another thing that Joni sold was this Ormolu mounted, uh, 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 circa probably about 1820 or so um uh Famille rose mandarin vase um with bronze mounts though the mounts were quite attractive i couldn't I, they didn't really give much in the way of pictures of the mounts so i can't really tell and it was obviously a lamp at one point uh but those mounts look pretty that mount looks pretty old and that's not a modern mount because they do re they they they, they do have there are places in Egypt and whatnot where they 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 make mounts. They make French gilt mounts, and uh, I believe in China now they're 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 finding they're finding ways to produce them as well. But uh, that that's an old mount. That's an old mount. This thing was made into a table lamp, probably back in the 1920s or something. Um, and uh, but nice looking bronze mount on it, and it went for seventeen hundred and fifteen dollars. Not bad, not bad. Very elegant though. Uh, very elegant style. Uh, you don't see them very often. Um, and then, uh, that was it for the week. Okay. I'm just looking back at my, uh, my page here where I, I keep all the sold stuff. And, uh, like I said, it was, it was a pretty good week, but there wasn't a whole lot going on and there's not a lot going on this week. We're going to put up with the things that we can find. We may try updating the page, the, the, the newsletter page, uh, a second time around in a, in a few days in case some things turn up because it's, it seemed peculiar to me that there was so little, um, uh, for sale right now. But um, 
I, I'm not sure why. I'm not really not sure why. So at any rate, I, I, that's about all the steam I have in me right now. Uh, my, I can hear my feel my voice cracking. Uh, I hope you're all well, and uh, thank you for your patience. And we'll be getting to the uh, identification assistant replies as soon as I can. Um, I, I hope to do some of them on um, Friday after I got the video done. Um, and, and I just, uh, not, no chance, not, no way on earth. All right. So everybody have a great week. Um, we'll be look for the uh, videos on the on the sales coming up in uh, New York. We'll get to those as soon as possible because I think there's some very interesting, exciting things coming up over there. And some of them are going to be sort of tests of the market. I think um, uh, to see how see how it uh, how it, it will accept uh, uh, a bunch of sales. And uh, Bonhams also has some sales uh, coming along, and we're going to talk about them. Uh, so it'll be interesting because it's been it seems like it's been a dry spell for the last. Uh, um, a couple of months because the big auction houses don't do anything really in the summer. Um, they do a few smaller sales. They do some online sales, things like that, but they don't do any of the major sales. And they, as we all know, they all start them back up in September. And, uh, and then they, of course, have them in the winter and so forth. But um, here we are. All right. So everybody have a great week. And uh, we'll be back later in the week with more things. And uh, thanks so much for walking, watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And uh, leave a comment and uh, say hello. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.